my name is Lisa Baker. I teach at North Lake Elementary and I teach kindergarten. Every child is a story that's yet to be told. And I am so fortunate that I get them in chapter one of the story. They come in with a clean slate. They want to learn math. They want to learn reading, science, and social studies. I feel that laying the foundation in all of these subjects is key to how successful these kids are going to be later on. Instead of just teaching to children, I teach with the child beside me. Every day I start with videos on YouTube that are going to be part of what we're going to be learning. So if it's high frequency word raps and chants, we're up and we're moving around. And I feel that using manipulatives, using real life situations, getting them up, making them move is what helps them to learn as an engaging tool, changing the way I speak to my children sometimes. I will put on the British accent and talk like this, and sometimes that is just perk up. It is so rewarding to know that I have made a difference. Just in the teaching of them, that, I, that my teaching was fun. I chose RISD because of news articles, reading in the papers, living in Richardson. Uh, I, I would see things, the great things that were going on in the district, the wonderful rallies behind the administration, the teachers, they, they only spoke well of, of the district and their experiences were, were great. They had support, they had um, great teams, they had everything I wanted to be a part of. If I was going to be a new teacher, I said, why not start at the best of the best? And that's RISD. I come here every day and I do what I do. It's not a job, it's my passion. Um, it's everything that I embody. And to be honored like this is, is very humbling and I'm very thankful. My name is Jeff Brown and I teach economics and AP macroeconomics at Lake Highlands High School. Whether they're researching a topic on GDP or some other topic that we may be talking about, I always try to get them to dig a little bit deeper, take another step in the race. Approaching it that way, the race never really ends. They need to be lifetime learners. I also try to simulate things. Economics is a great subject to essentially have life simulations, whether it has to do with banking and money supply and having a little society within our classroom to be able to, if when the money supply goes up or when the money supply goes down, what the effect of the society is. No matter what they do in life, um, they're going to use economics because economics is, is simply about decision making and, and how do people make decisions and why they make those decisions. I guess my best investment advice is that nobody knows what's going to happen and the best thing you can do is just live beneath your means and save a little bit of money every single month. Life will be a whole lot easier. My ultimate goal for my students is that they're able to find happiness in, in whatever they want to do and that they have been able to be given enough tools to where they're able to make the right decisions that will help them find that happiness that they're looking for. My name is Marion Figueroa. I'm the kindergarten teacher at Moss Haven Elementary. If I start a lesson off with just going over the basics, like if we're talking about addition and going over the definition of what adding means, you kind of see the students drop off in their interest. But if I maybe show them a picture of the San Francisco Bridge, it was made by an engineer, and an engineer designed it. He drew it first, he had to sketch it out, and then they had architects decide how much weight this bridge can hold. The architects and engineers are working in hand in hand together. It starts conversation within the students. They are making a connection from real life to something of a basic skill that they need to know in order to get there. And knowing what the end result they could possibly be when they grow up, they're starting to set little goals for themselves in the future. Very interesting to me to see how their little minds work. And that's how I started going to education was really because of human development, early childhood development. But the other part is social skills. What does it look like to be a good learner? What does it look like to be a good friend? Like the yin and the yang, you've got to know your academic skills and you've got to understand how to be a part of a community. I have high respect for them and they have high respect for me. You work with them, you see how hard they try and you're pushing them to get there and when they finally get there, it's the best thing to celebrate with them, to give those high fives, the hugs, the phone calls home to tell the parents what a great job their child is doing in class. So celebrating in their success is really nice.
My name is Stephanie Miller. I teach music at Skyview Elementary. I come up with the craziest things to do in my classroom. Anything from turning my teaching partner into an interactive anchor chart, teaching my sixth graders a basketball routine using glow-in-the-dark basketballs. I just use whatever it takes to get my kids to love music. And at the beginning of the year, we listen to their music. And so we listen to Usher, and we listen to Lil Wayne, we listen to uh, Nicki Minaj, we listen to Katy Perry. And while we're listening to their music, we talk about their music. We talk about the form, um, what it means. So that's when I introduce him to the classics. We talk about Mozart, we learn about his life, we analyze his music, we talk about his form, we compare and contrast Mozart to some of the musicians today. I challenge my students at Skyview to be the best student they can possibly be. I challenge them to take pride in their work. I challenge them to never give up. Before they learn music, they're gonna learn to be a musician that has character. My name is Carrie Nasrallah. I teach ESL at Terrace Elementary. I speak uh, English, French, Spanish, German, Arabic, and Italian. Basically what you're doing is you're finding ways to help students be able to transfer the skills that they have in their own language into English. We know everybody from kindergarten teachers up through sixth grade. We have to know where they're going, where the kids are going, and where they've been. Once they start getting a little bit of taste of that academic language, so many doors start opening up for them and then you can start widening their horizons a little bit. You can start bringing in some academic concepts. Hypothesis, guess, inference, these are all the same kind of words. So as long as you're teaching one, go ahead, expand your, you know, teach the other words that they'll recognize and they'll say, oh, I remember that because if we're, you know, doing reading, it's inference, but if I'm doing science, it's a hypothesis. If I'm doing math, um, it could be an estimate look at the bigger picture, and whatever it takes. I do a lot of music in my classroom. Any kind of new concept, I write songs to. I've done Justin Bieber songs, I did the one for Call Me Maybe. A lot of them remember the concepts because of those songs. I think we all have kind of an inner teacher inside of us that tells us, like, are you making a good choice? I want them to be able to do their own thinking, to be able to come up with their own answers, their own questioning strategies, their own evaluations. They don't need me to make an assessment, and they sure don't need the state or anybody else to make their own assessments. They should be assessing themselves, their work, their behavior, their ethics, all of those things. If I can give that to them, if I can put that little teacher inside their own self, I've done my job. When I wanted to start my employment, my career here in the United States, I only applied to Richardson. I think we're unique. I really do. I, I'm so blessed to be part of this school, and we're a family. My name is Carissa Niemeyer, and I'm the head choir director at Forest Meadow Junior High. I believe if I'm having fun and I'm engaged in my class, then they will be. So I may reference a popular dance, and we'll use that in a warm up. I also try to do variety within repetition. A lot of times our concepts need to be repeated, and since it's skill-based, they have to develop those skills. Richardson wholeheartedly supports the fine arts and recognizes its importance in a whole child education. It's so vital for students to have an opportunity to do something collaborative every day, something that's creative, something that's expressive. Those are our future leaders, creative thinkers, problem solvers. There's countless studies that link fine arts education to both academic and social success, be it increased test scores, or confidence or interpersonal skills, all of those things are linked to being involved in fine arts. Particularly in a time when they're so ingrained in their technology that they feel like they're connected, but they're not connected on a human level. When they come together in choir, you've taken that element away from them of an instrument, something tangible. It becomes something that's not tangible, which is their voice. Together, automatically is powerful. I do hope they walk away with a lifelong appreciation for music, for creativity, and for how arts can impact our world. My name is Omar Pastrana. I teach at West Junior High, and I teach robotics and engineering.
I teach a different content than most kids are used to. They've never seen how to program before or see that they actually type something into the computer and it creates something. They've never seen that before, but now they're getting a chance to be a part of it. Uh, they've never seen them take on such a, a daunting task of working in AutoCAD. Uh, that's something I get a chance to see every day. Kids who, when they walked in, they're like, I'm excited about this, but I'm scared. And then now they're really pumped up about it and they feel very confident. And that is so rewarding to see them go from nah, to yay, I'm excited. So in my class, I spend time building, drawing, and programming. And I want them to experience that. And they have to try it out. They have to fail. Uh, we kind of jokingly chant, fail, 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 succeed. Uh, that's our path to success. By having a website, they can look at the notes, they can look at videos, they can look at any information that I've put together for them. I want them to be able to explore. And so I allow that time to exist. And so I say, hey, there's a couple of things that I've taught you. I want you to look at them. And that exploration time lets the students get in there, they feel safe, and they can get into things that I may not have been able to teach them or I may not have known that they needed to spend more time in. So the student can spend more time learning how to draw polar arrays in an AutoCAD and then be able to take that and now that they feel confident, help the person next to them who's exploring something else. And that helps the students move into that next level. And so I, I do things that are engaging for the students. Um, by doing a pinball machine, without them realizing it, they get to accidentally learn physics, they get to accidentally learn project management, and working together as a team. And those things are transferable way outside of the classroom. 800 teams from 30 plus different countries. Every year, the game changes. They have a video game controller, they're driving around, and they're seeing these things, and in two minutes, they have to make a whole bunch of ideas happen. Uh, they have to control different mechanisms, they have to look at the game strategy, and that challenges them to be quick thinkers, to be quick assessors of what's going on. And it sounds like we're playing a lot of games, and it sounds like we're doing these different things, but it's the same in the business world. Uh, you're gonna be working with one client that needs this adaptation, then you're gonna need to transfer over to another client, and then these people are gonna want different things, so you have to adapt quickly. And if you can assess the problems quickly, and you can accomplish the solution, you're gonna be very, very marketable. My name is Ashley Scott. I teach third grade at White Rock Elementary. My first grade teacher, Mrs. Johnson, I remember her, she taught my dad and his brothers when they went through Mohawk. So for me, that was really cool to have a connection with her through that. North Junior High and Pierce High School. Just along the way, I had a lot of really great teachers that had been there that were very supportive and encouraging. Went to TCU and decided I wanted to come back and teach in Richardson. I challenge my students through differentiated instruction. Sometimes kids will all have a worksheet that looks similar, but then the numbers inside of the word problems might be different. So some kids might have a two-step word problem and some kids might have a three-step word problem. Our new 21st century classroom is great to engage them. We'll write out sentences on our desk real quick. My kids love using the iPads to create iMovies. They can either airplay them through our Apple TV or they can plug them in and share them. And having the fluency building up now will only help them in the future. So if you can get them thinking outside of the box at third grade of how to use an iPad differently that is beyond what we're using, then by the time they've graduated high school and they're going into college, then maybe they're thinking a little bit differently. They're gonna present something a little bit differently and it'll give them a better opportunity in life to find a job. So even though pencil paper is important and we do it, I want them to be able to have the knowledge and the confidence in trying something different. If the risk pays off, there's a great reward. And if not, we can learn from it and move on. And there's no judging and it's just a comfortable space. So that's my main goal for them when they come in here is to feel comfortable and able to do what they need to do for the day. My name is Meg Schull. Um, I teach at Bowie and I teach third grade. It's so fun and rewarding and exciting for them to see, wait a second, I can do this because of all the different strategies we pull in. You know, it used to be where, and when I was in school, there was one way to do it. There was a textbook, and so you opened it up, and here's how you multiply two digit by one digit problems, or two digit by two digit, and all it did was show how to do it, and then there were 100 problems. Math is so different now because we're exploring and showing kids the why behind it and all of these different options. There's no longer one algorithm, there's five. My philosophy of teaching is that kids learn by doing. In third grade, a huge part of it is learning your multiplication tables. At Bowie, we do an ice cream sundae party. It's called banana split multiplication. And so to give them an incentive to learn them and to do something fun, they have to take little tests that they earn their toppings based on the facts that they've learned. 
when I came to Richardson ISD, I'd always heard great things. I mean, academic excellence, it's just a stellar district. And so what has led me to stay is the personal connections that I've made with others. Just be it my principals, I've always been super lucky, the people that I work with, because above all, we all have one goal in mind. It's to do what's best for kids. It's all about making meaningful connections with kids, because once those meaningful connections are made, we can do anything. My ultimate goal for them is that they become lifelong problem solvers that love learning. My name is Tony Stromer. I teach AP Environmental Science at Richardson High School. I've always been into environmental science as a kid. Interacting on something that I truly feel passionate about makes me happy to come to class every day. Schools will have the outdoor garden, but having the greenhouse to facilitate that garden is a unique idea. Within the school, the principal has been very understanding for you know, the projects that we want to do, the Eagle Scout projects that come in to build, the garden boxes or the hydroponics or the community people that come in to do the aquaponics and buying plants from us also. We've used the greenhouse to interact with the community. So the district giving us this facility and kind of letting us use it with the outside of the school has been a real advantage to kind of spreading the concept of your own personal food. AP Environmental Science is a very broad topic. We try and cram it all into one year where every kind of topic could be easily a major in itself. Uh, we do air, land, water, agriculture with food, uh, waste management. Uh, we got a lot of political um, influence and law influence in there. Uh, we also have to look at the past and how we got to where we are today. Uh, so we'll look at human populations and the changing of those populations. That's a lot of stuff to cram into one Earth Day. So we expand Earth Day into every day because these things all happen to you on a daily basis. So not just one day to celebrate, let's recycle. Recycle is a very small piece of everything that happens around us. And so the sooner they learn it, the more they kind of carry it on to their normal lifestyle. The students that I want to challenge, I'll make them control a situation. I'll kind of give those leaders maybe a flexibility on how they run that group and kind of dictate how they want to present their final output. And then a lot of my top students that are in the science magnet, we have an Envirothon competition team. That one person may start an entire new thing coming around and change somebody else's lives, whether they're getting fed or the community goes to like 100% renewable energy. 